Welcome fellow commanders to this glorious Elite Dangerous Engineers guide. In this video, I will show you how to unlock each engineer and in which order you should unlock them in, in Elite Dangerous, as well as which blueprints you should pin. Down in the description, I will have each engineer timestamp for ease of access. Now let's start with Felicity Farseer. Felicity deals in grade 5 frameshift drive upgrades which grants you 55% more jump range which is a huge quality of life improvement. Now she also deals with grade 3 thrusters, sensors and detailed surface scanners, grade 1 shield boosters, frameshift drive interdictors and power plants. So what are the requirements to unlock Felicity? Alright well you learn about her from public knowledge so you already know about her. You gain access to her because your Pilot's Federation Exploration rank is Scout or higher. Then you need to get your hands on one single Meta Alloy and take it to the Desiat system. If you don't have Scout or higher rank in Exploration, the very best way to get that is just to target Maya and then watch my video on the Road to Riches. We will be heading to Planet A2A and Maya to Darnell's Progress, where we can purchase those Meta Alloys very simply and easily. The amount of exploration money you make, even as a newbie, will be plenty to get you to the rank that you need to unlock Felicity. Let's say you already have the rank of scout for exploration, well, the next easiest method to get a metal alloy so you don't have to fly all the way out here, is to just purchase them off of fleet carriers. Now you can just look on anara.cz, don't worry, link will be down in the description, and you can find the nearest fleet carrier to you and just snag one up there. Once you have your meta alloy, it is now time to head over to Farseer Inc. and the Desiat system to unlock Felicity Farseer. Once you have her unlocked, you want to get her up to level 5 and you want to choose increased FSD range, no matter what ship you fly. I highly recommend that you pin this blueprint here so you can upgrade your other ships remotely. The experimental effect you're going to apply to your FSD completely depends on the size of the FSD itself. FSD sizes 1 through 4 you will want to use deep charge and anything greater than 5 and above you will want to use mass manager. This gives you the biggest boost to your FSD range possible based off the size of your ship. Before we get too deep in this Unlocking Engineers video, make sure you take the opportunity to watch my How to Farm All Engineering Materials Fast video. I'm telling you, this will get you all the mats you need as quickly as you possibly can within Elite Dangerous. It is now time to unlock Elvira Martuk. She is responsible for Grade 5 Frameshift Drives, Grade 3 Shield Generators, Grade 2 Thrusters, and Grade 1 Shield Cell Banks. Here are the requirements to unlock Elvira Martuk. First of all, you already know her from public knowledge. The second requirement is you need to travel at least 300 light years. Now you already did that in order to unlock Felicity if you traveled all the way out there to buy metal alloys, so that's awesome. And last but not least, you must fulfill your contract by providing her with three units of Soontil relics. Elvira's home system is located on Kuhn. The only place you can purchase Soontil relics will be at Shevernoski City in Nagiri. Once you have arrived at Shevernoski City, it's just as easy as hopping over to the commodities market and then just purchasing three of the Soontil relics. Once you scarf up your Soontil relics, it will now be time to head over to Kuhn. Once in Kuhn, you will be heading over to the Long Sight base. Watch your back when you are flying around with cargo, you can get interdicted by NPCs. In order to unlock our next engineer, Marco Quint, you will need to get Elvira Martuk at least to level 3 engineering. Early on in your engineering career, I highly recommend that you either pin reinforced shields or thermal resistant shields, either one. In most cases, you will want to go with reinforced shields. There are many different types of experimental effects you can add to your shields depending on what you want to do, like more shields, more resist, things like that, but in most cases I go for high capacity. Now that we have Elvira to level 3, it is now time to unlock Marco Quint. He is responsible for grade 4 power plants and grade 3 power distributors. Although his engineering isn't all that glorious, he is basically a stepping stone to Professor Palin, which will be the engineer we do after him. Here are the requirements to unlock Marco Quint. You learn from him once you get Elvira Martuk to level 3. You gained access to Marco Quint because you were invited by the Sirius Corporation. And last but not least, you fulfill your initial contract by providing 25 units of modular terminals. The home system for Marco Quint is located in Sirius. 
The most efficient way to get an invitation from the Sirius Corporation is to do the Road to Space Bucks once again. You will need to take 8 million in exploration data to Davy Dock and Procyon. Once you have obtained allied status with Sirius Corporation, all you have to do is check the mission board for your engineer's mission. Now that you have your engineer's invite, all you have to do is get your hands on 25 modular terminals. There are two ways to do this. The first method is to head over to anara.cz and look on fleet carriers and see if you can buy them there. In most cases, you can. The next fastest way to get modular terminals would be to do passenger missions, so be sure to check out this video here. Once you have our modular terminals, head over to Quint Research Base here in Sirius. You must get Marco Quint to level 3 so you can unlock Professor Palin. So the very best thing you would do would be to click on your engineer's workshop and either work on your power distributor or your power plant. Marco Quint is my cold engine go-to guy, so I like to pin the low emissions power plant, and if I had to choose, I would get the thermal spread as the experimental effect. It is now time to unlock Professor Palin. He is responsible for grade 5 thrusters and grade 3 frameshift drives. Here are the requirements. You learn about Professor Palin from getting Marco Quint to level 3. You gained access to Professor Palin because you have attained a maximum distance from your career start location of at least 5,000 light years. Then you can fulfill your initial contract by providing 25 units of sensor fragments. Professor Palin's home system is located in ARC. It is now time to spread your wings and head 5,000 light years away into the black. In order to do this in the most efficient way possible, I highly recommend that you buy yourself a Diamondback Explorer, put a fully engineered A-rated FSD booster on there, as well as a large fuel scoop and an auto field maintenance unit. Hop onto YouTube and check out how to do the Neutron Superhighway for Elite Dangerous. This will get you to 5,000 light years four times faster. Once you have arrived 5,000 light years from your starter location, you are now safe to self-destruct your ship, saving you the time from having to fly all the way back to the bubble. It is now time to pick up 25 Thargoid sensor fragments. We're going to be doing this in HIP 17403, Planet A4A. Once you arrive to Planet A4A, navigate over to negative 35 by negative 141. Or you could use your detailed surface scanner to reveal the hidden location of the crashed ship. The Thargoid sensor fragments spawn right next to that crashed Thargoid ship right there, near that anaconda. Once you find the main Thargoid sensor, destroy that and scoop up any sensor fragments that you find from this or around in the surrounding area. Once you have vacuum cleaned up all the sensor fragments, you are safe to log out to the main menu and then back in which will refresh the spawn. Keep repeating this process until you collect at least 25 of those sensor fragments and then you're good to go to head back to Palin. Head to the Able system and go to planet 4E. You can now land at Able's laboratory to complete the Palin unlock. Alright, that was a lot of work. Let's get on to engineering these grade 5 thrusters. You will want to upgrade Professor Palin all the way to grade 5 on the thrusters. And even though I currently have clean drive thrusters on this ship right now, I highly recommend that you pin the dirty drives and get the experimental effect drag drives. Once you have Professor Palin's blueprint pinned, you don't have to worry about flying all the way out here again. You can just visit Felicity to put the experimental effect on any future builds. It is now time to unlock the Dweller. He specializes in grade 5 power distributors, grade 4 pulse lasers, grade 3 burst lasers, and grade 3 beam lasers. In order to unlock the dweller, you first learn of them through common knowledge so you already know them. You gained access to the dweller because you dealt with at least 5 black markets. Last but not least, you fulfill your initial contract by paying him 500,000 credits. And the dweller's home system is located in Weird. If you check out your codex under smuggling, you can see just how many black markets you have traded in during your career playing Elite Dangerous. As you can see, I have only traded with 5 black markets total, which was the minimum to unlock the dweller. The very best method to get items to sell to black markets would be to just accept a mission that has 5 or greater items that they need you to take somewhere, and then just cancel that mission. When you do that, it turns the items into stolen goods which can be traded at black markets. 
The other method would be to purchase items that are legal in one system and then take them to another system where they are illegal and then trade them to the black market. Keep in mind the dweller wants you to trade to different black markets so you can't trade all five items at once. You must go to five completely different black markets and trade one item at a time. One of the best ways to find black markets in your area is to head over to nara.cz, click on the Galaxy tab, and then click on Systems and Stations. Click on the nearest tab. After you do that, check the black markets and make sure you put your reference system in there where you're currently at. Once you get your system in there, make sure to check the ignore fleet carriers and then just do your search. This will pull up a list of stations in your area that have black markets. Once you have traded with five black markets, it is now time to head over to Black Hide in the Weird System. The only thing that is left to do is to fork out 500,000 space bucks to the dweller, then you can unlock them and start your engineering process. I highly recommend that you pin his Charge Enhanced Power Distributor Blueprint, and then get yourself the Super Conduit's Experimental Effect. Unlocking these first five engineers that I've showed you in this guide so far gives you the opportunity to create some really nice exploration ships, combat ships, mining ships, pretty much any ship you want. You have a pretty strong foundation. It is now time to unlock Lee Chung. He is responsible for grade five shield generators, sensors, detailed surface scanners, as well as grade three shield boosters. You learn about Li Chung by getting the Dweller to level 3. You gained access to Li Chung because you have traded in over 50 markets. Last but not least, you fulfilled your initial contract by providing 200 units of gold. Li Chung's home system is located in Laksak. In order to see how many stations you've traded with, click on your codex, then your commander, and after that you're going to click on your stats. From this menu, you will click on the trading tab, and as you can see, I have only traded in 92 markets in my entire career playing in Elite Dangerous. Alright, so let's say you've traded with 35 stations in your career playing Elite Dangerous. Well, your very best bet would be to buy 15 cheap items, then sell them one at a time to stations you have never sold an item to before until you get up to the 50 needed to unlock Lee Chung. If you have never traded in Elite Dangerous and you need the full 50, well brace yourself Effie, you're going to enjoy yourself on this one because it's going to take about 5 or 6 hours to trade with every single one of those stations one at a time. Now that you have traded with 50 stations, it is now time to snag up 200 tons of gold. Head over to Inara under the Commodities tab, select gold and make sure to set it for best exports. Make sure to plug in the current system you're in in the search bar so it pulls up the closest gold locations near your present location. You can also filter fleet carriers out of the list. Once you are loaded up with all your gold, head over to Laxac Planet A1 to Trader's Rest. Even though Lee deals in shield generators, sensors, and detailed surface scanners to grade 5, you definitely want to pin a shield generator. You either want to pin the thermal blueprint and get the experimental fast charge effect for bioweave combat vessels, or you can just go with the most popular and most used, which is the reinforced with the experimental effect of high cap. Let's now unlock Todd the Blaster McQuinn. He is responsible for grade 5 multi cannons, rail guns, as well as grade 3 fragment cannons and grade 2 cannons. You learn of Todd the Blaster McQuinn through common knowledge so you already know him. After that you gain access to Todd the Blaster McQuinn because you earned more than 15 bounty vouchers. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 100,000 credits worth of bounty vouchers. His home system is Wolf 397. One of the closest places to get bounty vouchers for Todd McQuinn is to head over to Wolf 363. There you will find plenty of high resource extraction sites. There will be tons of bad guys to kick in the teeth, so you're going to get done with this really quick. Once you have all your bounty vouchers sorted, head over to Wolf 397. Head to Planet Trust Made, and from there you are going to hit up the Station Trophy Camp. Once you add Todd to your list, you add two very popular and very powerful weapons to your arsenal. I highly recommend that you pin his multi-cannon overcharged blueprint. Whenever I head over to Todd, I generally get the corrosive shell as well as the incendiary rounds experimental effects on two different multi-cannons. 
in almost every single case, I will put that corrosive shell effect on my smallest multi cannon. Then I will put the incendiary rounds experimental effect on my largest multi cannon. If you are into multi cannons or rail guns, well, Todd the Blaster McQuinn is gonna be your dude. Let's now look at unlocking Celine Jean. She is responsible for grade 5 hull reinforcement packages as well as grade 5 armor. Yep, she's awesome. You learn about her because you got Todd the Blaster McQuinn to level 3. You gain access to Celine Jane because you have mined over 500 tons of ore. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 10 units of Painite, and her home system is Cup. About the very best way to get that 500 tons of ore is to head over to ED Tools and click on Painite. Once you do, it's going to pull up a list of systems in your area and just go there. Most of those are double overlaps and you are going to find a ton of Painite. Once you have mined up all the Painite, sell everything except for the 10 you need to unlock Selene and then you're good to go. With your 10 Painite in hand, you will be heading to Cuck Planet B3. The base you are looking for on the planet will be called Prospector's Rest. Selene's hull reinforcements and armor are vital to your survivability in PvE and PvP combat. As far as which blueprint to pin, I would go with the heavy duty armor and then go with the deep plating experimental effect. Now I am recommending the heavy duty armor because there is something to be said about being able to sprinkle magic fairy dust all over the standard armor that every ship comes with, which weighs nothing. And once that blueprint is pinned, well you can sprinkle that magic fairy dust all over every ship you own, remotely. Now let's unlock Bill Turner. He is responsible for grade 5 plasma accelerators, sensors, and detailed surface scanners. He also deals in grade 3 life support, refineries, auto field maintenance units, fuel scoops, frame shift wake scanners, kill work scanners, and manifest scanners. You learn about Bill Turner by getting Celine Jane to level 4. You gain access to Bill Turner because you are friendly with the Alliance of Independent Systems. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 50 units of brolamite. Bill Turner's home system is in Aliyah. It is now time to do the Road to Space Bucks once again. You will need to take 8 million in exploration data to the system 78 USA Majoris, where you will be selling it at Teller Terminal. Selling all of your exploration data to Stellar Cartography will bring you to Allied status with the Alliance of Independent Systems. Now all you have to do is check the mission board and your engineer's invite will be sitting there waiting for you. Once you are cool with the Alliance, it is now time to get your hands on a bunch of Bromolite. And the very best way to do that quickly is to head over to Anara and check and see if there are any fleet carriers that have any for sale. Most of the times they do. If you can't find any on fleet carriers, you're going to have to mine it yourself. So head over to eddb.io, click on the bodies tab. It's going to bring up this page here. Make sure that you select the ring type as icy and the system reserve is pristine. Next, you just need to put in your reference system, which should be 78 Ursa Majoris. Once you do that, click on the find bodies and it will pull up a huge list of planets that have pristine icy rings right in your area next to the engineer. Now that you have 50 bro in your hold, it is now time to head over to Turner Metallics Incorporated. So Bill Turner offers three grade five upgrades as well as a whole slew of grade three upgrades. So which one do you pin? Well, I would recommend that you go with pinning Bill's plasma accelerator and either pick long range, efficient or focused. The experimental effect is kind of up to you. I find myself going with phasing sequence, multi-servos, or thermal conduit quite often. It is now time for us to take a moment to bow down and worship the gloriousness of a fully upgraded plasma accelerator. It is now time for us to unlock Dee Dee Vaderman. She is responsible for grade 5 shield boosters as well as grade 3 shield generators. You learned about Dee Dee Vaderman because you got Celine Jane to level 4. You gained access to DD because your Pilots Federation trade rank is merchant or higher. And finally, you fulfill your initial contract by providing 50 units of Leviathan Brandy. DD's home system is located in Leasty. At this point in your Elite Dangerous career, you should easily already have the rank of merchant, so let's move on to the booze. The only place in the galaxy you can purchase Labian Brandy is from Lave Station in Lave. All you have to do is hop over to the commodities market. Now there is a drawback commanders. In most cases, you can't purchase more than 24 at a time. So yep, this turns into multiple trips. 
You will be making trips back and forth to Lesty. You're going to be landing on Planet 1A and heading to Vaderman LLC. After you finally deliver her enough brandy to keep her smashed for a month, let's talk about the blueprint you should pin. The majority of the ships you engineer will be using shield boosters, so I highly recommend that you pin the heavy duty blueprint. And then in most cases you're going to be going with super conduits for the experimental effect. Let's now unlock Liz Ryder. She is responsible for grade 5 seeker missile racks, torpedo pylons, and missile racks. She is also responsible for grade 3 mine launchers, grade 1 hull reinforcement packages, and armor. You learned about Liz Ryder from public sources, so you know her already. You gain access to Liz Ryder because you were invited by the Ariba Blue Mafia. And finally, you fulfilled your initial contract by providing 200 units of landmines. Liz Ryder's home system is located in Ariba. In order to become buddy buddy with the Mafia type people, you will need to do the Road to Space Bucks once again. You can pawn off all that exploration data to a Wyra Fleeble in the Ariba system. Once you have sold all your mission data to the Mafia, all you have to do is check the mission boards and your engineer's mission will be in there. When I accepted this mission, I was sent out to the literal boondocks. Yeah, over 200 light seconds from the star, so enjoy that, commanders. Once you have completed that engineer's mission, it is now time to get your hands on a whole boat pile of landmines. The best way to do that is to head over to Anara in the commodities section and check for landmines. You also want to make sure you can get this done in one trip, so make sure you're flying in a ship that has at least 200 cargo capacity. Once you are loaded down with landmines, you will be taking them back to Ariba to people who have nothing but good intentions. Plot a course to Makalu and then head over to Demolition Unlimited. Liz Ryder's engineering is kind of meh, but you mostly want to unlock her so you can unlock future engineers. Alright, well what blueprint do I pin then? Well, I would recommend that you go with the Seeker Missile Rack and get the High Capacity Blueprint pinned. As for the experimental effect, I myself generally go for either oversized or multi-servos. The thing is, is there are quite a few pretty decent effects in there, so just choose what you want. We can now unlock Heratani. She is responsible for Grade 5 power plants, detailed surface scanners, Grade 3 sensors, and power distributors. You learn of Heratani by getting Liz Ryder to level 4. You gained access to Heratani because you are ranked outsider or higher with the Empire. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 50 units of Kamitra cigars. Hera's home system is located in Kuamaki. If you still need that Imperial rank, I highly recommend that you check out my video on the fastest way to grind Imperial and Federal rank. Now that you have your rank sorted, you now need to head over to Hamill Terminal in Kamitra. Alright commanders, once you have arrived, all you need to do is head over to the commodities market and check out how many cigars you can actually grab. Now depending on the system state, it can be few or it can be many, but no matter what, you're going to be doing multiple trips. You will be taking all your cigars to Kuamaki, Planet A3A, to Jet's Hole. Let's start talking about what blueprint you should pin. Now she does do detailed surface scanners to 5, but you definitely want to pin her engine. Since you have a cold power plant pinned already, I recommend that you pin the overcharged blueprint with Hera. And then depending on what you want to do with your ship, either go with the monstered experimental effect or the thermal spread. Having two power plants pinned is a great idea, like if you want a cool running engine, you just run over to Marco, and if you want to have an engine that gives you a bunch more power at the cost of heat, well then you come and see Hera. It is now time to unlock Yuri Ismak. He deals with grade 5 mine launchers, sensors, and detailed surface scanners. He also deals with grade 3 torpedo pylons, seeker missile racks, frame shift wake scanners, kill warrant scanners, manifest scanners, and missile racks. You learn about Yuri Ismak by getting Felicity Farseer to level 3. You've gained access to Yuri Ismak because you've claimed 50 or more combat bombs. You've fulfilled your initial contract by providing at least 100,000 credits worth of combat bombs. Yuri's home system is located in Guryak. One of the quickest ways to find active combat zones is to head over to inara.cz, click on the systems and stations, then the conflict zones tab. Don't forget to add your current system to the search bar and it will pull up a whole bunch of active conflict zones in your area. Once you have arrived in the conflict zone, just choose whatever side you want 
and then get your space butt kicking shoes ready because you're going to need to at least kill and claim 50 bounties. Collecting the 100,000 needed for the turn in is no big deal. Just make sure that you don't wind up getting yourself space murdered or you'll end up losing all your bounties. About the easiest way to check and see how many bounties you have is to click on the codex, then your commander, head over to your stats, and then click on combat. So far, I have only claimed 420 combat bonds. <laughs> 420, I love it. Once you get all your combat bonds sorted, head over to Guryak 2A and then land over at Pater's Memorial. Yuri has a pretty big list of semi-decent and useful blueprints that you can pin, but if I had to choose, it would be the detailed surface scanner with expanded probe radius. Let's now unlock Brew Tarquin. He is responsible for grade 5 burst lasers, pulse lasers, and beam lasers. You learned about Brew Tarquin because you got Hera to level 4. You gain access to Brew Tarquin because you have a Pilot's Federation combat rating of competent or higher. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 50 units of Fujin tea. Brew's home system is located in Muang. Hands down, the very best way to get combat rank in Elite Dangerous is to join the war effort and kill Thargoid scouts. Inara breaks it down for you and shows you which combat zones are the most hot and currently right now it is Astarope like usual. Do your part for the war effort today. Now that you have earned the rank of Space Badass, it is now time to head over to Futon Spaceport in Fujin to pick up your tea. Head over to the Commodities Market and see how many of those teas you can get your grubby little mitts on. This is all dependent on system status, so you can either get a little or a lot, but once again, this is going to be multiple trips. You will be taking your tea to the Moong system, Planet 5A. Hurry up and get that tea delivered to Brew's Legacy because as you know, tea gives you cotton mouth and they're completely out right now. In a nutshell, Brew has three really cool lasers. Now which one do you pin? You will want to pin either his long range or efficient beam laser. Brew does have a few pretty decent experimental effects and it's totally up to you what you choose, but in most cases I go with either thermal vent or I go with oversized. Let us now unlock Zachariah Nemo. He is responsible for the Grade 5 Fragment Cannon, which is basically the cheapest and most powerful weapon you can use in PvE combat. He is also responsible for Grade 3 Multi Cannons and Grade 2 Plasma Accelerators. You learned about Zachariah Nemo from getting Elvira Martuk to level 4. You gained access to Zachariah Nemo because the party of Yuru invited you. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 25 units of Zane Biomorphic Companions. Zachariah's home system is located in Yuru. Yep, you guessed it. Once again, it is time to do the Road to Space Bucks. You will want to take that 8 million in exploration data over to Yuru and sell it at Caden's Reach. At this point, you have probably done the Road to Space Bucks a whole bunch of times in order to get ally faction with all these engineered systems. The cool thing about all that is not only are you going to be getting ally status with these guys relatively quickly by doing the Road to Space Bucks, you're also going to be making, well, a whole bunch of Space Bucks now that FDev has went and balanced everything, which is great. Once you have arrived at Caden's Reach, pawn off all that exploration data and then check the mission boards. Once you're inside the mission board, just check for your engineer's unlock quest mission, complete that, and you're ready to get the Zane Biomorphic Companions. You can snag up all the companions you need in the Zane system at Zen Dock. You know, I don't even know what he's going to be doing to or with these Biomorphic Companions, but hey, I'm just the delivery guy, I'm not here to judge him. The good news is the people that work at Zen Dock keep a huge supply of these companions on hand for all those needy people out in the galaxy. You will be taking your totally clean and barely used companions over to Yoru 4. From there, you will take them to Nemo Cyber Party Base, where they'll finally join the party. I know it's obvious at this point, but uh, what blueprint should I pin? It should most definitely be the cheapest of all weapons in outer space, the Fragment Cannon. The blueprint type you want to pin though is the Rapid Fire Blueprint. And my absolute most favorite experimental effect is most definitely going to be Screening Shell, which halves the reload time. If you want to melt an anaconda, full shields to blowing them up in a matter of seconds, then these daggone fragment cannons are the way to go. 
let's now unlock Lori Jamison. She is responsible for grade 5 sensors, grade 5 detailed surface scanners, grade 4 refineries, fuel scoops, auto field maintenance units, life support, grade 3 frame shift wake scanners, kill warrant scanners, manifest scanners, and shield cell banks. You learned about Lori Jamison by getting Marco Quint to level 3. You gain access to Lori Jameson because your Pilots Federation combat rank is dangerous or higher. You fulfill your initial contract by providing 25 units of Conga Ale. Lori Jameson's home system is located in Shinratra, Desra. Alright commanders, this unlock can actually be pretty brutal. First, let's talk about how you unlock the system Shinratra Desra. You must obtain the rank of elite in some profession, either combat, trade, or exploration. Now there are two ways you can do this. The first method is to go out and mine until you want to throw up in your mouth, selling 1 billion, 50 million worth of refined ore to some space station out there in the universe. That will get you to the elite rank in trading. Or you can check out some of the new trading missions that have been rebalanced recently. They do pay a lot more. I'm not sure which way is faster, although you can make upwards of almost 200 million an hour doing actual trade missions in Elite Dangerous. There is no other way to say this, so I'm just going to blurt it out. Be prepared to grind. Getting from no combat rank to Dangerous is no small task, Commander. Hands down, the fastest, most efficient way to obtain elite rank in combat is to head over to the Pleiades system and go over to Asterope. There, you will break your foot off in a whole bunch of Thargoid butts, helping the war effort. You want to take a pretty maneuverable and combat capable ship out there like a Crate Mark II. For complete easy mode and lazy factor, you want to sprinkle a bunch of anti-Xeno multi-cannons all over that puppy, and yep, it's going to kick a bunch of butt for you. Now that you have the system unlock and the combat rank sorted, it is now time to head over to Conga and pick up all that ale at Laplace Ring. And as much as you would love to pick up a full load of Conga ale and just do this in one trip, well, even after all that grinding, you're going to have to make multiple trips. Of course it's 182 light years away. Once you have arrived in system, you will be heading over to planet A1. You will be dropping all this ale off to Lori at Jameson Base. Getting to this point with Lori was no small task, Commander. Congratulations. Lori is another one of those engineers that have a huge list of blueprints that you can pin. However, there is one that stands out above everything else. The blueprint you want to pin is lightweight sensors, and the cool thing about it is there is no experimental effect, so once you get it pinned, you never have to come back here again, unless you want to. Let's now work on unlocking Ram Ta. He is responsible for grade 5 electronic countermeasures, point defense, heat sink launchers, and chaff launchers. He also engineers grade 4 collector limpets, fuel transfer limpets, prospector limpets, and hatchbreaker limpets. You learned about Ramta from getting Lee Chung to level 4. You gained access to Ramta because your Pilots Federation exploration rank is surveyor or higher. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 50 units of classified scan databanks. Ramta's home system is in Mean. At this point, you definitely have the rank of Severe. It only takes 1,140,000 worth of exploration data to obtain that. Your next step would be to head over to the Jameson crash site. This is the king of all encoded farms. This is a short clip of my how to farm every single engineering map fast video. Check that out for the full details on how to do the Jameson crash site run. In a nutshell, you'll only have to be at the Jameson crash site just for a few minutes to get the high-end encoded drops, then go to your trader and trade them down for the classified scan databanks. With your classified scan databanks in hand, you will head over to the system mean and then fly over to planet AB5D. From there, you will be landing at Phoenix Base. Alright, so Ramta has four grade 5 blueprints that you can pin, and this is going to totally be up to you, but for me, I picked the heat sink and I went with the lightweight blueprint, or you can go with the one that gives you extra ammo, it's totally up to you. I decided to go with the lightweight, when you're trying to milk every single light year you possibly can out of an exploration ship, or get just a little more jump range out of a mining ship, I like to go with the lightweight, because it really does help in the grand scheme of things. 
I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be said about Ram. I mean, he's an okay engineer, but he doesn't really do anything glorious, so if you want to, you can put him off to the last minute, kind of like how I did. It's time to unlock Tiana Fortune. She is responsible for grade 5 frame shift weight scanners, kill warrant scanners, manifest scanners, collector limpet controllers, fuel transfer limpet controllers, hatchbreaker limpet controllers, prospector limpet controllers, and sensors. Grade 3 frame shift drive interdictors and detailed surface scanners. You learned about Tiana Fortune? Because you got Heritani to level 4. You gained access to Tiana Fortune because you are friendly with the Empire. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 50 units of decoded emission data. Tiana Fortune's home system is based in Akinar. The good news is when you had to unlock Heritani, you sold a whole bunch of exploration data to an Empire station. Unless you've done something crazy like beat up a whole bunch of Empire ships, you should be friendly status already. The second part to this puzzle is you must have a permit to access the system of Akinar. So in order to do that, you need to obtain the rank of Squire with the Empire. Since you are a wise commander, you have already watched my How to Grind Empire and Federation Rank Quickly video. So yeah, getting Squire is going to be simple sauce for you. Once you have unlocked the system permit, the very last thing you need to do is bring 50 decoded emission datas to Tiana Fortune. One of the main reasons why I grouped Ram Ta and Tiana Fortune together is, well, being the wise commander that you are, you headed over to the Jameson crash site and decided to kill two birds with one stone. Take that emission data to Akinar Planet 4A. You will be landing at the planetary base Fortune's Loss. Tiana Fortune is another engineer that has a whole boat pile load of grade 5 blueprints you can pin. So which one do you want to pin? I plan on pinning the lightweight sensors blueprint. However, if you're into combat, the kill warrant scanner is also pretty awesome. So I might as well rank her up by uh, making a kill warrant scanner win. If you go with a kill warrant scanner, the fast scan and the long range are pretty awesome. Let's look at unlocking Colonel Briss Decker. She is responsible for grade 4 frame shift drive interdictors, which are the highest you can get in Elite Dangerous, as well as grade 3 frame shift drives. You learned about Colonel Briss Decker from getting Yuri Ismak to level 4. You gain access to Colonel Briss Decker because you are friendly with the Federation. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 1 million credits worth of combat bonds. Colonel Briss Decker's home system is located in Seoul. At the beginning of this guide, you pawned off a whole bunch of exploration data to the system that Felicity Farseer is in. Well, they're allied with the Federation, so you should be friendly with them right now. The next piece to this puzzle is acquiring the Soul Permit, and the only way to do that is to obtain the rank of Petty Officer with the Federation. My Imperial and Federation Rank Guide video will show you absolutely everything you need to know to get to Petty Officer and beyond. Earlier in the video, I showed you how you can farm combat bonds by doing it in conflict zones. Now it's going to be super easy for you to get 1 million in combat bonds, so yeah. Now that you have all the requirements sorted, it is now time to head over to the Soul System, land at Iapetus, and then head over to Decker's Yard. Unless you are into pirating, there really is no reason to unlock her. Yeah, I never really did until the very last second. But you know, I did it for posterity just in case there are other commanders out there that do want to do a little pirating. So go with pinning the long range frame shift drive interdictor. Let's now unlock the Sarge, which ironically could have been done before the Colonel because she kinda sucks, but hey, I guess Colonels outrank Sergeants. He is responsible for grade 5 collector limpets, fuel transfer limpets, hatchbreaker limpets, prospector limpets, as well as grade 5 cannons. He also deals with grade 3 railguns. You learned about the Sarge by getting Yuri Ismak to level 4. You gain access to the Sarge because you hold the rank of midshipman or higher with the Federal Navy. You fulfilled your initial contract by providing 50 units of aberrant shield pattern analysis. The Sarge's home system is located in Beta 3 Tukani. At this point you already know how to do the Federal rank grind, so check as well as how to use the Jameson crash site for encoded data, so check. You can now take your shield pattern data to Beta 3 Tukani, land at planet 2BA, then land at the planetary base called the Beach. 
Even though the Sarge can do grade 5 cannons, I recommend that you pin the grade 5 collector limpet. Go with the lightweight blueprint cause really, who uses cannons anyway? No matter which limpet you decide to pin, he works absolute magic with all limpets so yeah, you're going to be visiting him quite a bit. Congratulations Commander, at this point you have unlocked every single engineer within the bubble. In order to do the Colonia Engineers, as they are over 22,000 light years away, you are going to need a good ship that has decent jump range as well as at least 200 cargo space. Don't forget to grab a Hatchbreaker Limpet as well as an Auto Field Maintenance Unit. Two of the four things you need to unlock the Engineers out in Colonia are easily available out there already. Don't worry, I'll tell you exactly which items you need to pick up in the bubble before heading out. Three things you should keep in mind before heading out to Colonia. Number one, don't forget a fuel scoop or this is going to be a really short trip. If you have been putting off going out to Colonia because of how far it is, well, never fear Commander because you can still be space lazy. Just hop a ride on a fleet carrier. And last but not least, once you complete the engineering out in Colonia, some of your blueprint pins will change. Don't worry, we'll keep up with that as we go. It is time to unlock our very first colonial engineer, Marisha Hicks. She is responsible for grade 5 collector limpets, prospector limpets, refineries, fuel scoops, multi cannons, as well as fragment cannons. She also deals in grade 4 fuel transfer limpets, hash breaker limpets, as well as cannons. You learned about Marsha Hicks by getting the dweller to level 4. You gained access to Marsha Hicks because you obtained the exploration rank of Surveyor. You fulfill your initial contract by mining 10 units of Osmium. Marisha Hicks home system is in tier. Before you head out of the bubble, make sure that you mine up some Osmium, you only need 10 of it, which can be found in pristine metallic rings. Your first stop in Colonia will be in the tier system, planet A2. Finally, after 22,000 light years, you can drop off this Osmium at the watchtower. Now, Marisha has multiple grade 5 blueprints that you can pin, but you have a couple options here. You can decide to pin any of the other popular multi cannon blueprints, or you can decide to pin the lightweight collector limpet, which then frees up the cannon for the Sarge. You can then find out just how much the cannon sucks, even with engineering. The other thing I need to mention before heading out to Colonia, you should most definitely make sure you're stocked up on engineering mats. The last thing you want to do is farm for these when you get out here, that's for sure. Let's now work on unlocking Mel Brandon. He is responsible for grade 5 frameshift drives, thrusters, shield generators, burst lasers, pulse lasers, beam lasers, frameshift drive interdictors, and shield boosters. He'll also do grade 4 shield cell banks. You first learned about Mel Brandon from getting Elvira Martuk to level 4. You gain access to Mel Brandon because the Colonia Council invited you. You fulfill your initial contract by delivering 100,000 credits worth of bounty vouchers. Mel Brandon's home system is located in Lutain. In order to receive your engineer's invite for Mel Brandon, you will need to sell a whole bunch of exploration data, at least 6 million to Dove Enigma, which is located in the Colonia system. Once you are friendly status, click on the Colonial Council member and pick up your engineer's invite contract. That engineer's mission will send you to Colonia Dream, where you can turn it in and complete your unlock. Plot a course for Lutain and then head to planet A1C. From there, you'll be landing at the brig. Just like the rest of the engineers out here in Colonia, Mel Brendan has a whole boatload of grade 5 blueprints that you could pin. Now if you go through the trouble of flying all the way out here to Colonia, you most definitely want to pin his rapid charge shield cell bank. Then go for the shield boss experimental effect. I certainly hope you didn't forget to bring your 100,000 credits worth of bounty vouchers or you're going to be kind of SOL commander. So hopefully you got all that sorted before flying all the heck the way out here. It's time to unlock Petra Amanova. She is responsible for grade 5 hull reinforcement packages, seeker missile racks, armor, missile racks, chaff launchers, heat seek launchers, and point defense launchers, grade 4 mine launchers, torpedo pylons, electronic countermeasures, and auto field maintenance units. You learned about Petra Almanova because you got Todd the Blaster McQuinn to grade 4. You gained access to Petra because you attained the combat rank of expert. You fulfilled your initial contract by delivering 200 units of progenitor cells. 
Petra's home system is located in Ashura. As long as you unlock Lori Jameson before you flew all the heck the way out here, well, you're gonna be good on the combat. Progenitor cells are also super easy to get your hands on, just head over to Ogmar. Once you get out of here, you will be landing on the Whirling Station, which happens to look pretty awesome. The good news is they seem to sell boat tons of them, so you get to get this done in one trip. With cells in hand, head over to Asura Planet 1D. Once you get there, you will be landing at the Sanctuary. Like the rest of the Colonia Engineers, Petra has a whole bunch of Grade 5 blueprints that you can pin that are actually pretty decent. The one that stands out above all the rest is most definitely going to be the Heavy Duty Hull Reinforcement Package. The experimental effect you'll want to get is almost always going to be deep plating because hey, who doesn't like more hull reinforcement? After drinking 4.5 gallons of tea and suffering from what seems like an endless cycle of cotton mouth, it is finally time to unlock the Tyne Door. He is responsible for grade 5 plasma accelerators, sensors, detailed surface scanners, life support, power plants, power distributors, frame shift drive weight scanners, rail guns, he also deals in grade 4 kill warrant scanners as well as manifest scanners. You learned about Etain Dorn because you got Liz Ryder to level 4. You gained access to Etain because you attained the trade rank of dealer. You fulfilled your initial contract by delivering 25 occupied escape pods. Etain's home system is located in Loss. If you followed this guide and unlocked Laura Jameson, then well, you've got far more trade rank than you even need right now. If you want to skip the whole farming for the escape pods, just head over to Inara and then check out the commodities section. Make sure that you set it to the best exports and you are going to notice there is a huge market out there in Colonia. Yep, people are making money off you. But if you want to farm them yourself, head back to Latane. Once you arrive in system, head over to the nav beacon and scan it. This will reveal all the hidden signals within the system. Once your scan completes, hop back into Super Cruise. Hop over to your navigation panel and look for what is known as a distress call. Once you have arrived on location, you will need to bust out with your data link scanner and scan this cargo pod. Once your scan goes off, open up your navigation panel and look for the escape hatch number 3. Target escape hatch number 3 and then fly over there. This is where you're going to get all your occupied escape pods. Before you can get those juicy escape pods, you will need to scan it with the data link scanner once again. Before you do anything with your hatchbreaker limpets, take this opportunity to add all this space garbage to your ignore list. It'll make it a lot easier to get those occupied escape pods. We're basically ready to get occupied escape pods now. Just open up your nav panel, go to contacts, and then target. You're going to notice that there's a limpet docking port. Just target that. Now it is just about firing off a hatchbreaker limpet, sitting back, drinking a cup of coffee, and watching those juicy occupied escape pods just float out into space. As your limpets are collecting the escape pods, you are going to notice that occasionally they will bring on damaged escape pods. I guess that's what's been stinking up space so much, but yeah, add those to your Nord list as well. Once you have all the escape pods scarfed up, you now need to log out to the main menu and then back into the game again. What this does is actually refresh that spawn for you so you can do this over and over until you get the 25 you need. With your pods in hand, plot a course over to Loss. Head over to planet A to B and land at Kraken's Retreat. Alright, so Atine is actually pretty awesome. He is the only one in the entire galaxy that does grade 5 life support. So pin his lightweight blueprint. Doing this frees up Lori Jameson for lightweight sensors, which then frees up Tiana for any limpet or any scanner you want. One of the last things you want to keep in mind when you are pinning these engineers, let's say you pin an engineer at level 3 that you intend to get to level 5 later and you try to do it remotely, well that's not going to work. You actually need to be there at his workshop to level him up. Some of my most memorable experiences playing Elite Dangerous is when I was a total and complete noob and I just started engineering. I got that sexy new ship and started pimping it out and it was really neat to just see how much this engineering really affects the gameplay. In the interest of Cottonmouth Commanders, I'm going to end it here. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace.